How many times have you seen the scenario where you're in your classroom and a student puts their head down and either withdraws from the classroom, meaning they don't activate into the class, or they simply fall asleep? What do you do? Where do you draw the line between motivation and encouragement? Welcome to my... So many things I want to call this. Oh, hey, welcome to Lesson Plans, a podcast about teachers and things that are interesting to teaching, or one could say, welcome to Teacher Talk, a podcast about teaching and things that are interesting to teachers. Or I could simply say, welcome to Middle School Madness, a podcast that focuses on the middle school years and secondary education. My name is Oliver Wea. I am a 26-year veteran of the middle school classroom. It is a place that I love and adore <clears throat> and is so much fun and endlessly entertaining. And yet today at school, we have this endless scenario that I think has befuddled teachers for years. What do you do when that student puts their head down and goes to sleep or withdraws from the lesson? A couple things that come to mind are ways, you know, do they have the hood up? Do they have the earbuds in? You know, all these kind of distractions. But what really I focused on today was this concept of motivation and encouragement. When you've had that same student for 26 years, how do you encourage them? Encouragement, I see, is something that's very positive. Come on, you can do this. Hoods down, earbuds out, let's engage. But in this moment, are you also enabling that student by, I don't know, pulling their laptop out of their bag, you know, opening it up, doing the little things for them so that they can do the little things themselves. And in doing this, is that really a mistake? Shouldn't they be taking it out? And if they're not going to take it out, are you better as the teacher to just have them sit there? And it's horrible. This never gets easy because some days as someone who is motivated, who for 26 years can't stand this scenario, I want to motivate that person. And I think I always start out with motivating through humor, through positivity. You got this. You can do this. It's one simple thing. How do you build a house one brick at a time? Let's put one brick down today and you can do it. And sometimes this strategy works successfully well. They will go hoods down, earbuds out. They will engage in the class. They will make little things along the way. But that doesn't always happen. Sometimes they just refuse. They can't do it. And I think this is where encouragement turns to motivation. And that motivation in many ways simply becomes negative. Well, if you are not going to do this, then you don't get a grade. That's a crazy statement. <laughs> if you don't do the assignment, you got to get a grade because in many ways, there's no better way to simply do school. School is based on you accomplish a task. I'm going to grade that task no matter how big or small. And if you add the tasks up, you know, you have a quiz or a test. And so I find myself, Tom Sines, just the beginning of class, everything has a point value to it. Today's task, and it's outlined here, is going to be worth 10 points. Should you fail to do this, bump. And why do I use those points? I use those points to motivate them to get it done. It's a skill that they can do. Here's the point level. Get these skills done. And if you don't do it by the required time, the end of class, then you simply get less points. Now, what happens always, and many of you know this out there, is you get that standard bell curve of accomplishments. You're going to get your one or two kids who take whatever task you've given them, they finish it quickly, and then they naturally intrinsically begin to move on to the next step. You don't even have to tell them what that next step is inside their brain, even if it's a middle school brain or a high school brain, they know if I've accomplished this, here's what's going to come next. These are probably, you might say, your, your academics, your highly motivated kids. And then in the middle, you have to me what would be the majority of your students. They move at a friendly pace. Some time is spent talking to a friend. Some time is spent working, back to talking, fooling around, out of my chair, back to working. This constant ebb and flow that I think goes on in the majority of us, even as adults. And then you get the students at the other end of the bell curve. The ones who you literally just have to go and, and stand there over their shoulder. They have a lot of questions. They're very tentative. And I guess I'm talking about skills that you've already worked on in your class 
They know these skills. They just lack that idea to focus and get those skills going. And the only way you can do this is you've got to literally sit behind them or you pull their laptop over, whatever we're working on, you begin to do it for them, which in many ways is not what teaching is about. And it is a big struggle because you've got to motivate them by the points. You also want to encourage them in a positive way to do it, but I'm also motivating them negatively by saying, if you don't do this, then you have a lack of the points and your grade goes down. And this always raises the next thing that we talk about in the hallways. And we've already touched upon it. This internal drive of a student to get the work done in any class. I think some teachers are of the belief, hey, I show up, I tell you this, I taught you this, please go and do it. But many times in a classroom, that's the opposite of what happens. Yes, you've told them. Yes, you've demonstrated. Yes, you've asked them. But they may or may not have an interest in doing that. And then what do you do? Now you're back on this cycle of encouragement and motivation, positive or negative. It's a huge daily struggle. Because in the age group of, you know, 6th grade to 12, focus is a challenge, energy level is a challenge, puberty is a challenge. Everything that comes into your classroom could be a challenge on that day. It's just the way it is. As teachers, we're looking for patterns. If I can get a kid to be very consistent over a long period of time, that's good. I think that my motivation and encouragement hopefully helps them. And I like that. I like that a lot. I wish that it didn't have to be negative, but if you don't put that carrot up there, that carrot is also doing a nice thing of setting that boundary. If you don't accomplish this task, then you don't get these points. You also have a timeline on it. One of the other motivators that I've used in my classroom when it comes to this over the years is this concept of look around the room, engage what everybody else is doing. Notice that everybody else is accomplishing this task except you. So the strategy in many ways of taking that student and grouping them outside of the social group is a nice motivator. Because now that student might look around and see that their peers are doing something. The teacher has now indicated that I can't do this. Maybe if I want to be part of that social group, I should probably just focus for a whopping two minutes, three minutes, four minutes to get this task done so I'm not an outlier. Once again, like all things in the classroom, that works a lot of the times, but not every time. Which goes back to, how do you motivate the unmotivated? How do I get that student who simply refuses to work nine out of 10 days in my classroom to do anything? And I, I know the answer. And I'd be curious to hear what everybody else does out there in teacher world. How do they motivate the unmotivated? And to me, this goes back to when I worked in a French restaurant in the summer. This almost has nothing to do with education, but you'll see in a second. And every day I showed up to my job and my boss shook my hand. And every day I would say hi to the head waiter and I would ask him how he was doing. And he would say, okay. And I did this naturally. I was my way of greeting people. How are you doing? And I did this all summer. Unbeknownst to me, I was just being friendly. And on the last day on the job, I said to the head waiter, how are you doing? And he didn't say, okay. He told me how he was actually doing, how he was tired, worn out. He didn't get along with the owner. He was struggling as the head waiter. Other tables weren't going his way. And I loved his answer because it was something different than what he had given me for the prior 80 days for wherever I was. But in that moment, I also realized I just kept asking because he told me, you just keep asking. And I kept asking and I kept asking and I kept asking in a non-threatening, safe kind of way. Right? I really did want to know how he was doing every single day. And I guess I was always disappointed when he simply said, I'm doing okay. And when it comes to motivating your students, that's the same concept. The motivation doesn't have to be super high energy. You can do this. Come on, take, pull your hoodie down, rip out the ear pods. You got this kid. The motivation can simply be give it a little try today. Try just a little bit today and see what happens. And when you see them the next day, you're the same way. It's a consistency in, in energy. That's it. And if you do this over time and you pair that encouragement with, you know, the greatest gift you give me as a teacher is watching you accomplish the small things in my class. That's what I want to see. And you do that from the first day to the third day to the 50th 
to the 180th day. You can then encourage and motivate somebody in a very positive way that doesn't use points, that shows them you care, and that eventually they will accomplish one task. And on the day that they accomplish that task, that's the day you have a lot of energy and are super excited. And you can go, woohoo! You throw your hands up in the air. It's always like JD and Scrubs, woohoo! You can throw your hands up in the air and say, look what you've accomplished because you did a little bit every day. You finally got something done. That's something to be proud of. And in my teacher head, it then washes away all the weeks of not doing it because you of the teacher have now witnessed the greatest gift ever, somebody who has motivated themselves in your classroom to get a task done. And that is why we got into teaching in the first place, right? Leave comments down below about how you like to motivate and encourage in a positive way. That is an awesome thing. I thank you guys for swinging by. Always good to have you. Really appreciate it. And inside my head, the bell is rung. The class is over. The clock is ticking. It is time to go. Punch out. What is it? Punch out, wash up, and start the day one more time. Awesome. My name is Oliver Weah. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you guys in the next one.